pretty. <gasps> pretty. Pretty. What the f I'm not the pretty f helpless princess in distress. I'm pretty f powerful and ready for success. So what is more offensive? A little girl saying f or the f on equal and sexist way. Society treats girls and women. I don't get it. Are you strong and powerful or are you oppressed? Because strong people don't complain that society is unfair. Strong people recognize that nothing is fair, but still get the job done anyway. Now understand that I'm not responding to the kids here. I'm speaking to the adults who wrote this crap. Contrary to radical feminist ideology, children shouldn't know anything about politics, sexual violence, or income disparities. They are children. They should be busy coloring or playing tag. But radical feminists have decided that this information is so important that it must be shoved down children's throats before they are old enough to comprehend it. In fact, this information is so important that it doesn't even matter if it's factually correct or full of logical fallacies. Pay inequality! Women are paid 23% less than men for the exact same work. Differing median earnings across all jobs is not the same thing as getting paid less for the exact same work. But tell me, how is a little girl who doesn't even know her times tables supposed to understand things like data analysis, averages, standard deviations, or statistical significance? Cage, I want to ask you, do you even understand what you're saying in the video? Do you realize the weight of what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, right. This girl is six. She doesn't understand that every piece of information in those F-hate videos that her father presented as fact were completely untrue and based on fallacious studies. Because if you are just handing out this information and saying that it's fact to a person who you haven't given the means to criticize you, well then, I would have to say that's not education, that's indoctrination. The kind of indoctrination that you can use to trick children into saying illogical stuff like this. And women who graduate university with straight A's get paid as much as men who only got C's. So bad grades equal more bank? Just because you're a boy? Um, hello and hell no. Grades don't lead you to success. All grades do is say that you know how to memorize information. In order to be successful, you need to be creative and be a risk taker, especially if you are going to be a big time CEO. There is no creativity or risk taking when you memorize answers and then select A, B, C, or D on a Scantron. I mean, the whole idea was using a bad word for a good cause to get people's attention. What was the most fun part of it for you? Um, saying the lines and for a good cause. Okay. She totally wasn't coached to say that. Why is it that these radical groups always had to force feed children their crappy ideology? I mean, it's so weird because these radicals would criticize the Westboro Baptist Church for indoctrinating kids to hate homosexuality, but yet they do the exact same thing by using fallacious science to teach their daughters to hate straight white men. Let's get more into why they do this to children, but first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent and it helps fund a lot of the quality improvements that I make on this channel. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on Alt Tech. Links to my BitChute channel, my Minds page, and my Parlor page can be found in the description as well. Okay, so the obvious point is that they are doing this because kids are impressionable. However, it's not simply that. Kids aren't just impressionable, but they have zero ability to critically assess the ideas they are being presented, and, more importantly, if they talk back or contradict their parents because their parents are saying stupid things, the kids could get punished. These people are showing what cowards they are because essentially they are saying, we can't convince adults, so we'll just indoctrinate helpless children. And by the way, they know they are doing this. Listen to this feminist on the TEDx stage who thinks it's appropriate to talk to her six-year-old child about Harvey Weinstein, who basically says what I just said. So, I decide... I know what message I want my boys to get. Piaget, a famous psychologist, says that children between the ages of 5 and 10 see morality through the lens of other. My guys are in between the ages of 5 and 10. So ideas shared by me and you and coaches and teachers and government leaders are seen as absolute and unbreakable. Yes, neuroplasticity tells us that we can influence their thoughts and behaviors as they get older. But the reality is, we have this captive audience right now staring back at us. I need to say something. 
I know I can actually make a change, I can change their brain development, and this can actually last, last a lifetime. You want your kids to grow up to be good people? Then don't force feed them information. Because guess what? If you teach them that authority figures can only say absolute truths, then all it takes for them to turn into a bad person is some smooth-talking leader with a lot of status who tells them to do destructive things. That's how people get involved in cults, and that's how you get massive amounts of people to believe dumb stuff like a disparity in the median salary across all jobs between men and women is the same thing as getting paid less for the exact same work. Now, of course, you can teach your kids some of your ideas, but if you actually want to have them grow up into good adults, then you should be mostly teaching them values and the mechanisms of problem solving so they can criticize things and learn for themselves. As I said before, not giving your children the mechanism to criticize what you're teaching them is cowardly. Because here's what they learn to do. This is what's happening to the generation of kids that are being taught this way. That first clip I showed you of the children swearing was from 2014. It talks about the wage gap, sexual assault, and domestic violence, and it essentially blames those things on men. So naturally, it makes sense that a 21-year-old YouTuber named Nicole Raffi, who was 14 at the time that video was released, would grow up to hate men. Hi, I hate men. I also wanted to talk about the stupid, dumb ass phrase that is not all men and what I mean when I say I hate men. I hate the term not all men because it diminishes when a woman talks about her experiences of what she went through. They are teaching children to hate men and this is the end result of the stuff that YouTubers like Sargon of Akkad were criticizing back in the early 2010s. Let's take it a step further. Kids follow modeled behavior. When you make a claim like one in five women blah blah blah, but you don't show the evidence, then they'll do the same thing because you have shown them that they don't need to prove their claims. There are several claims that 21-year-old Nicole makes in her video without showing people the source material for those claims. Also, if you make nonsensical arguments like straight A should equal a six-figure salary, then kids will recreate those same nonsensical arguments. For example, someone like Greta Thunberg would have been 11 years old at the time of the release of the first video. Here is how she makes her arguments. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. Greta Thunberg made herself famous by shouting her beliefs at adults while providing no evidence or sources for her claims. Not only is this not an argument, but if you just go around screaming at adults or shout angry swear words when you don't get what you want, then adults are going to see you as undesirable. The real trauma of parents teaching their kids that stuff like this is okay is that other adults won't like their kids and therefore won't feel compelled to teach them useful skills or help them when they are in need. If you have ever taken care of kids before, then you know the kids you don't want to be around and you know the kids who are an absolute pleasure to teach. Yeah, it's messed up because these behaviors are the fault of the parents, not the kids, but it's the reality of the situation. So either they become the kid who nobody wants to teach or they become kids like this who can only repeat feminist talking points. My name is Eitan Bernath. I'm a 16-year-old male, and I am a proud feminist. Feminist, an advocate for women's rights on the basis of social, economic, and political equality of the sexes. We must be an ally for gender equality because it is not a women's problem, but it is a human problem. We must teach boys that women are not princesses locked up in a castle waiting for a strong man to save them. And some of my biggest inspirations in life are women who are big feminists like Ellen DeGeneres and Lily Singh. First, this was recorded in 2019 and wow that Ellen DeGeneres thing didn't age well. Second, feminism is not about equality. That is a gaslighting technique that they use. Look at their actions. If it was about equality, then they wouldn't constantly say that men's issues don't count. Uh, you also said that men deserve a safe space on campus, but I would have to say that every space in society is actually a safe space for men. Men don't get catcalled when they walk down the street. <laughs> Third, in reference to the 16-year-old kid, these kids who can only repeat talking points instead of thinking for themselves grow up to be useless adults. Recently, I was listening to a Tim Pool live stream with Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, where Tim said that a friend of his hired a bunch of college graduates to do stuff on social media, and they would constantly call him for every little problem asking him what to do. Eventually, he got rid of the college graduates and instead hired people who weren't educated but showed some initiative to figure things out on their own. 
no more constant phone calls, and when there was an issue, they went and handled it on their own for less money than he had to pay the graduates. Those are good employees. If I can leave you alone and you do an amazing job, then I have gotten my money's worth. That is far more valuable than a college education because memorizing what a college professor told you and marking it on a scantron doesn't teach you how to have initiative. It also doesn't teach you how to solve problems. Because really, do you think that I as a YouTuber went to school for any of this stuff? I didn't go to school to learn how to use a video editor or recording equipment. When I started, I didn't even know what programs to use. I had to take charge and learn all of that by myself. Even doing it at the basic level I do it at still requires a ton of education and a ton of practice. If you can't pick up information on your own and you aren't constantly learning new things, then you are going to be seen as useless. And a lot of this incompetent behavior we see is a matter of who these social justice warriors put their kids around. These woke parents have decided that it's more important that they teach their toddlers stuff like what's in this next clip than it is to teach them how to be a benefit to society. Does anybody know any of the dances from Fortnite? Oh, then you are a credit to your community. <laughs> but most of all, Michael likes to twerk. Now, does anybody in this room know how to twerk? Everything must be woke, and if you don't want to be woke, then we will force your kids to be woke. Look at this story. A dad in Canada is possibly going to jail for calling his biological daughter a she. Remember back in 2016 when people called Jordan Peterson nuts for saying that people would go to jail for misgendering? Well, not even five years later and we are already there. Also, they aren't just doing this in Canada. Now do you know where his daughter got the idea to be trans? From the school psychology team. She, now he, went in for cutting and having inappropriate crushes on multiple male teachers. They diagnosed him as gender dysphoric and started him on cross-hormone testosterone therapy when he was 14 years old. Based on his symptoms, any reasonable psychologist who wasn't an activist would not diagnose this kid as primarily gender dysphoric. Self-harm and a desire to be in a relationship with a much older male figure are signs of a molestation victim. That's what they should be treating. They should not be giving this kid life-altering medication at his age. Now I want to be clear on the medications being used. Hormone blockers are what delays puberty. Some of that is reversible. However, cross-hormone therapy like the testosterone therapy this person is receiving will cause infertility and that is not reversible. I want to make that distinction because I've seen a lot of trans activists saying that kids are simply delaying puberty with the blockers and only going on cross-hormone therapy when they become adults. That is not the case here, and I've seen many other stories where kids are being given cross-hormone therapy before they turn 18. The intent of the woke groups is to eventually make that the norm. Understand that the woke mob has control over a lot of major institutions. They have control over the colleges. And yes, that influences the medical community, because a part of the MCAT test that medical students have to take before they go to med school includes a ton of unnecessary woke nonsense in the humanities section. The new MCAT exam is a better test for tomorrow's doctors. The new exam is made up of four sections. These sections are all centered around 10 big ideas or foundational concepts in the sciences. These big ideas rely on knowledge of topics like cell division and differentiation, and demographics and social inequality. Social inequality. The woke crowd also has primary and secondary schools, they have the establishment media, and they even have children's books all promoting this agenda. In fact, I just so happen to have bought some of these books. Let's take a look. Since we are on the topic of gender dysphoria, the first book I have is Jacob's New Dress, a book that shows every mom, female teacher, and little girl as a perfect angel yet shows the other boys as bullies and all the fathers as the ones who have the wrong opinion about what kinds of clothes kids should wear. But wait, I thought feminism was not about man-hating. It's about equality for the sexes. Not that I think that a book that just so happens to only show men in a negative light makes you a man-hater, but according to the arguments of the woke crowd, it does. So if we want consistency, then they would have to accept this as evidence that feminists hate men. Here's the second book I got called Little Feminist, for ages baby to five years old. Great, shove your political ideology down your one-year-old's throat for $12. And yes, because I'm so gracious, I spent the $12 so you don't have to. 
This little set goes over different feminist icons. Let's see what we have. First, we have Indira Gandhi. Really? The woman who ordered a state of emergency so she could censor and imprison her political opponents? She also admitted on a television interview that she bullied a bunch of people into sterilizing themselves by revoking their paychecks until they did it. Who else do we have? Hillary Clinton. Well, I am glad to see that you are allowing your kids to be politically neutral until they develop their own ideas. The next book is called My Feminist. It's the ABCs of feminism for ages baby to four years old. First page. A is for activism. Yes, because what the world needs right now is children to shout angry slogans they don't understand. Maybe it was different in the past, but does anyone who self-identifies as an activist these days do anything other than bully people into conforming to their political ideology? E is for equality. Again, more gaslighting. Feminism is not about equality. They don't want to be equal. They want advantages. You can tell it's that way because they have stopped using the word equality and started using the word equity. That's to confuse you. I know it sounds similar, but equity does not mean that people start on the same footing. It means that everyone has the same outcome. What equity is saying is that if you work 10 hours and I work 20 hours at the same job and skill level, our pay should be the same. That's not fair or equal. The final book is Feminist Baby, brought to you by the wonderful people at Disney, ages 0 to 2. This is what the back of the book says. Meet the irrepressible feminist baby. She's strong, she's smart, and she makes as much noise as possible. Yet again, feminists telling kids to be as undesirable as possible. Screaming children do not end up with good friends or compel adults to teach them useful skills. Let's see what's inside. Feminist baby chooses what to wear, and if you don't like it, she doesn't care. First of all, I'm offended by the gendered language. How do you know the baby is a she? I thought it was wrong to appropriate gender norms to kids. It's great to see feminists following their own principles. Second, yet again, the book is teaching kids to be undesirable. In reality, if you wear clothes that are weird or awkward as a kid, other kids won't want to be around you, and they'll start to bully you. All of this stuff about anti-bullying and you are literally teaching your kids a philosophy that will get them bullied. Also, it turns out when other people don't like your behavior, they may have a point. You could be in the wrong. If you are teaching your kids to blow off any criticism, then you are robbing them of useful information that will lead them to becoming well-rounded adults. But instead, this is what they do. They tell kids that there are all these problems and the only solution is to yell and scream or cause violence because they never give any real solutions to these problems. They always say, there are all these super important problems and you can't solve them so you just have to deal with it. That was basically the argument of Robin DiAngelo's popular book, White Fragility. But right. you know why they get violent? No answer? That's right. Yeah. When people can't find a logical course of action, they, they, they become angry. That's right. When people are lied to for their entire lives, taught by authority figures to be undesirable, not taught any useful skills, and not taught how to critically think or problem solve, the only solution they will come up with is violence. All of this screaming about things like the wage gap does is radicalize people. Let's be honest though. The powers that be know how to fix the societal problems we're having. They would have to know because the political establishment is doing every correct wrong thing to get people mental disorders and mess everything up. It's like picking all the wrong answers on a multiple choice test so you fail. Considering how unlikely it is that you would randomly pick all the wrong answers, the only way you can do that is if you knew what all the right ones were. The answer to fixing our problems is healthy family structures. Feminists want to stop sexual assault? Well then, stop abusing men in family court and put dad back in the home. A part of dad's role is to teach their daughters how to avoid abusive men. But if dad's not there and he is an abusive loser, then not only will the daughter not know how to avoid abusive men, but because people are attracted to the characteristics of their opposite sex parent, she will be attracted to abusers. This has been well established in psychology for like a century. Freud was the first one to talk about it in modern history, but you don't hear the establishment authority figures bringing that stuff up. Why? because they don't want to solve the problem. Healthy people who can critically think and establish a good position for themselves in life don't vote in stupid policies that allow for these massive power grabs that we are seeing right now. 
They need the masses to be dysfunctional, so they promote things like polyamory. They promote single motherhood. They promote two working parents so kids never see their mom or dad, and instead, the establishment raises the kids through public schools. The powers that be know where their bread is buttered. But because I'm not like them, I'll provide possible solutions. You know what would be great? Is that if you were so successful that you could just pull your kids out of a public school that is trying to indoctrinate them, and instead, put them in a private school or homeschool them. Imagine if we had a legion of stay-at-home moms who said they weren't going to let the government teach their kids this crap and decided to homeschool their kids. With single-parent homes, you don't have that option, which is why single-parent homes are promoted. I say this in a lot of videos, but the answer to stopping these problems is to become as useful, desirable, and successful as possible. However, we can do even more than that. There also needs to be a movement of adults who sweep the nation and teach kids useful skills so they don't fall for this nonsense and get hurt by it when they become adults. People will believe anything when they're desperate, so the establishment feeds off of people who are completely useless. If you give those people a skill that will give them a comfortable life, then it's game over for the establishment. Everyone can play this game no matter what your age is. First, obviously you build a useful skill. Second, you donate your spare time to teach it to somebody. For this to work, you have to be charitable. The ones who have the best access to young people are parents. They can make sure their kids learn something that will lead them to good careers. Also, they can make sure they know basic skills like how to cook or make minor repairs. If you don't have kids but you have nieces or nephews, then you can teach them good values, you can show them how to follow those values with consistency, and you can show them how to learn things. If you don't have either of those but you are involved in some type of activity that young people are involved in, then use that to impart useful knowledge. Sometimes even just a single powerful piece of wisdom you can impart on someone can change their life. So if you have limited access to young people, it's best to really think about what your most powerful ideas are and focus on those when you're trying to help people. Get to know what ideas compel people to improve their lives and you'll be a lot more effective when you talk to them. Even if you're a kid right now, meaning that you're under 18, yes, you too can participate. If you are good at something like sports, how about you take that loser kid who always gets picked last in gym class and teach him how to dribble a basketball properly. Most of the reason people don't like that kid is because he is a detriment to the team. If you can teach him how to play the game and make him useful, then you can take a kid who would have grown up to be a loser with no friends and instead turn him into someone people like that has the ability to learn things. Because if he can't make friends or develop skills as a kid, then it's going to be way harder for him to learn those things as an adult. You can stop that person from going down that route. Tons of people are failing out there because they have never really learned how to build a skill, which means little things like teaching a kid how to dribble a basketball properly can make an astronomical difference on who that person grows up to be. Like I said, you don't have to wait until you're older to have a positive effect. If we all get this right, then the next seven years won't be the end result of a feminist t-shirt commercial like the Potty Mouth Princess is. It will instead be the end result of everyone building each other up. But with that said, I think that's enough for this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, if you haven't checked me out on BitChute, Minds, or Parlor, you can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.